Who owns the soul of the Democrat Party, the billionaire or the Bolshevik? Joining me now is my dear friend, president of the Mises Institute and former chief of staff to Congressman Ron Paul, Jeff Dice. Jeff, welcome here. So was Bernie essentially right when he said America has become a socialist country? You know I was going to ask you that. He's not entirely wrong, Judge. Let's face it, the Overton window has shifted a little bit. Socialism is not a dirty word on the left. It doesn't scare young people, especially. A lot of young people in this country, when they hear socialism, they think of Denmark or Sweden or something like that. They don't think of Nazi Germany. They don't think of the Soviet Union. They don't think of communist China. So I think Bernie's right. I think in 2016, maybe Bernie was an outlier in his own party. In 2020, I think he's right there in the center, and maybe Bloomberg's the outlier. But can, can Bernie actually make the argument that wealth should be redistributed or assets should be owned in common? And isn't such an argument so antithetical to American values that the majority of the country would reject it out of hand? I know it sounded like Bloomberg last night, but I think he made sense when he said that. Well, I'd like to think so. I mean, socialism is an incremental thing. We have all kinds of semi-socialism in the United States. All kinds of things are mostly owned and operated by the government. I mean, there's whole industries like banking and medicine and law and education, which are entirely wound up with government. So, you know, it's not something that the American people are scared of anymore. But I do hope that what comes across in these Democratic debates is that, is that Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, for example, they hate business in their DNA. The, the, capitalism to them is anathema, whereas Bloomberg, he, he doesn't hate it. He's a business guy. He understands what it took to become a wealthy person from nothing. So th there is a difference there, and I'm not, I don't want to poo pot, but I do think that, you're, that Bernie Sanders is not an outlier. I think your average Democratic voter is quite open to nationalizing or socializing entire industries. Mm. And I think that people like you and I have to view this, really, as a failure of sorts. I mean, we have failed intellectually, ideologically, with our young people. The, the whole bulwark of conservatism, Inc., and to a lesser extent, libertarianism has failed to make the case that history and theory and, and book after book have proven time and time again, which is that socialism doesn't work. But some people are still buying it. If you take, we only have about 45 seconds, Jeff, if you take the wealth transfer away from Bernie, doesn't he have a lot of views with which libertarians agree, like war and peace and what you can do with your body and surveillance and civil liberties? Well, supposedly he does. Uh, he doesn't seem like a civil libertarian when it comes to the police. He also apparently, by some accounts, cleaned up New York City quite a bit. So it depends on your perspective. But look, I want an anti-war candidate. I want to hear him talk about getting out of the Middle East. When he says that, uh, maybe I'll believe him. Trump said the same thing. Okay. Uh, Jeff Dice, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, joining us.